Welcome to the lair of the Batty Boffin. Hi there Batty fans, it's time for a little more Batty science and this time we're going to be doing experiment number three. You can find some downloadable project sheets for these if you pop along to www.battyboffin.co.uk and click on there on the experiments and you'll find a downloadable project sheet number three and this one is called Coat Hanger Gong. Coat hanger gong? That's a bit weird. Doesn't actually look much like a gong, does it? In order to do this experiment, what you're going to need is a metal coat hanger. Okay? We're going to tie a couple of bits of string onto it, here and here. Later on, of course, you could experiment. Does it work if you tie the string here? But for the moment, I'll show you the classic one. So there's your coat hanger with a couple of bits of string, and you'll need something like a spoon to hit it with. It's also good to have a friend, a glamorous assistant, perchance, to help you with this. As it happens, my glamorous assistant is off work today, so I'm going to have to do this myself. But here's how you go. You tie your two bits of string on, and then wind them around your fingers, and stick your fingers in your ears. Like that. Now, you'll need to lean forward a bit so that your coat hanger isn't actually touching any of your clothes, which with a lab coat on is a little tricky, but I'll give it a go, okay? So you're going to lean forward like this. And then have your glamorous assistant hit the coat hanger with the spoon. Now, I'm going to do this with just one hand because I can't hold it with two hands and hit it with a third one because I don't actually have three hands. Uh, I've always thought this is a bit of a design flaw. I'm going to have a word with God when I see him and say that every time you have a baby, I think you ought to grow another arm because it'd be so useful. But until design number two comes out, we're going to have to make do with the arms I've got. So here I go. I'm just going to do this in one ear. You get a better effect with two. Okay, so I'm going to lean forward. Make sure this is not touching anything. Now, you're not going to be able to hear this. You're going to have to do the experiment to get it yourself. But it really is quite good. <laughs> it doesn't sound anything like you'd expect it to. I'm going to talk later on about why it sounds like that. But for starters, you try that out, okay? Like this. And listen to what it sounds like. Then I'd like you to experiment a bit. I've said to tie the string on like that. Does it work with just one piece of string at the top? Try out some other metal things. Classic is an oven rack. This is a thing for putting your cakes in when you've made them. Okay? Like that. This is one of my favourites, actually. Sounds awesome. <laughs> what about smaller things? I've got a metal egg cup here. Amazing what you can get out of an egg cup. You have a go with some metal things around your house. Try them and see what it sounds like. When you've done that, you could experiment with some other things. Does it have to be a metal coat hanger? What about a plastic one? Does it work with plastic? If not, why not? If so, why? What about a wooden coat hanger? What about things like a plastic bottle? Does it make a difference if you hit it with a metal spoon, or a wooden spoon, or paintbrush? Does it make a difference? Or your finger? Does it have to be a metal spoon you hit it with? What about the yarn that you're using? I'm using some knitting wool here. Does it work with string? Does it work with really fine sewing thread? Does it matter how long it is? You go try all these out. Work out what makes a difference and what doesn't. Now I'm going to do one of those things where the table falls down and the, the video comes back up again. And after that, I'm going to tell you why it works. Now I hope you've had some fun experimenting. And hopefully you should have found out that it has to be metal for this to work. It doesn't work with the plastic or the wood or paper or anything else. It has to be metal. The reason for that is that metal has a property called resounding. It's the way that makes bells go that bong kind of thing. If you made trying to make a bell out of wood, it, it wouldn't really sound the same at all. So metals will resound, which means they kind of vibrate like that. And hopefully you should be able to see, if I twang this, you can actually see that metal vibrating in there. And this is the way that sound works. Normally when you twang something, 
you can see that piece of metal vibrating and that's vibrating the air around it and that's what sound is it's vibrations in the air those vibrations come through the air hit my ear and my ear converts the, the air vibrations into electrical signals that my brain goes oh that's a bong or whatever okay these are little clever bits inside your ear little vibrating mini bones and timpani little that's um, like drum like the mini you got, did you know you got a mini drum inside your ear and a mini hammer it's rather clever so these vibrations travel through the air to my ear and then my ear converts it into sound. Now, sound vibrations don't have to travel through the air. When I do this, the sound vibrations travel from the metal up the string into my finger, through my finger, and because I'm pressing it hard into my ears, that goes straight into the bones of my skull. You've possibly noticed this, that if you talk and then stick your fingers in your ears, your voice sounds really different. That's because it's the same thing. Some of your voice is travelling through the air and into your ears, and some of your voice is travelling through the bones of your skull and into your ears. And when you do that, you're just hearing the bone one, you're not hearing the air one. That's also why your voice sounds different to you than it does to other people, because other people just hear your voice through the air. You're hearing it through your bones as well. So all of these ones here will work if you just have it on the bones. Like I've got a cheekbone there, OK? So if I do that there, I'm getting the vibrations coming through the string and through my finger into the bones of my skull. So you could try this out. What you can do is bong it on your bone and then just move it slightly away. So touching the bone or not touching the bone. It sounds quite different, you can hear it. If you have a tuning fork you can do the same thing, you know, when you bong those and then touch the end of it onto your bone or not. Try it, try cheekbones, try these bones here. What about the soft and swishy bit of your cheek? Does that make a difference? I don't know, you go and try that out. So there's all kinds of different things you can do here, all to do with the way that sound is transmitted. Normally it's transmitted through the air, but it can be transmitted through things like a piece of string as well. And that's why the coat hanger gong works. So, hope you have a bit of fun with that and I'll see you next time, Batty fans. Bye for now. <laughs> Ha 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 